Hey guys, Steven here back with another video and today I want to talk about the Apple M1 Mac Mini that released in late 2020. I'll be unboxing it, but I'll also be giving you guys some value and I'm going to show you how I saved some money on this purchase as well as why I chose this over other Mac products. There were like three other Mac products that released. There was the iMac, the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro, but I decided to get the Mac Mini for many reasons, but it was mainly to save money and I'm going to show you how I did that in this video. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and let's get straight into it. So first things first, I got the Mac mini because it's actually the cheapest way by far to get into the Mac ecosystem. If you already have an iPhone or an iPad and you're looking for a really powerful computer or desktop or laptop, I really think the Mac mini is the cheapest way. The base model is $700 US and obviously that doesn't account for like a keyboard, that doesn't account for a mouse, that doesn't account for monitors and stuff like that. But what I will say is even with a budget setup, a really cheap you know, keyboard and mouse setup, all that sort of stuff, it is still cheaper than the other products, as well as it allows you to be a little bit more customizable. For example, I actually was able to purchase a really cool keyboard that I liked. It was the Keychron K4 and is a relatively cheap budget keyboard. But if I were to use like a MacBook or something more portable, I wouldn't be able to customize that. And if I bought something like an iMac, I also wouldn't be able to get an ultra wide monitor, which I also have. And not to mention a lot of people already have monitors at home, maybe from previous desktop computers, people already have keyboards and mouses and they're not that expensive. And I really still think it's the cheapest way to enter the Mac ecosystem. Additionally, I was able to save money by opting for the 256 gigabyte memory version of this Mac mini. And a lot of people probably think that's very little and I do agree. And the reason why I did this is because you can't actually add more storage after you purchase your Mac mini. So what Apple's actually trying to do is have you pay a lot of money for storage. If you look at the 256 gigabyte variant compared to the one terabyte variant, it's actually $400 more. And instead of doing that, I actually bought a Samsung T7 SSD for a couple hundred dollars. So almost half the price of an upgrade of one terabyte. So by purchasing my Samsung T7, I actually save a couple hundred bucks. And I definitely recommend you guys get external SSD instead of upgrading your storage internally because you're going to save a lot of money. So so that was one key way I was able to save money on this. In addition to that, I believe I got around a hundred dollar discount because I am a student and I went on the Apple education website, but I was actually surprised when they didn't ask me for any like credentials to confirm that I was actually a student. So if you do want to get a discount, you can actually go on the education website, which I will link in the description and there's a bunch of deals. I was tempted to wait till the end of the summer because a lot of times Apple will run a promotion where they will pair a set of headphones with a Mac product. So if you do have a little time and you do want to wait, I would recommend waiting for that because you do get a little bit more with your purchase. In addition to the keyboard as well as the SSD, I was also able to get the Satechi USB-C hub, which actually fits perfectly and it actually was made for the Mac mini. And when actually looking for USB-C hubs, uh, this was by far the best looking one. And that's probably because it was made for the Mac mini. It fits right on top of it and it's the same exact color. And the reason you want to purchase this is because the Mac mini actually doesn't come with a lot of ports. I believe it's only two lightning ports and I believe one USB port. But by adding this, you get an additional two USB ports, an additional two USB-C ports, as well as you get a SD card reader, which is also a benefit because I am a photographer. As for RAM, I opted for 16 gigabytes just because I always open up multiple applications. For example, right now I have OBS open as well as Photoshop. And if you are using something like Adobe Creative Cloud where you have Photoshop, Premiere Pro, Lightroom, a lot of RAM intensive editing programs, if you actually go to the preferences section of your application. So for example, I'm on Photoshop right now. You can see that Photoshop is by default allocating 2.7 gigs of RAM to run the program. So if you have multiple programs open, it's gonna hit that 16 gigabyte threshold actually pretty quickly. And then once it uses all your RAM, it'll start going onto your SSD, which is not ideal for the long run. So if you are planning to use this over the long run and do run a bunch of applications at once, I would definitely recommend choosing the 16 gigabyte version. But if you are just using this for productivity, maybe you're doing emails, day-to-day -day stuff, I wouldn't be worried with eight gigabytes of RAM. So yeah, that's about it for this unboxing and video. Uh, if you're worried about performance, I would say this is up to par with all the other Mac devices that came out in 2020, like the iMac, the MacBook Pro, the MacBook Air. There's a lot of different videos on it. There's actually the same chip in all those devices. The only difference is the cooling systems and there's probably not much difference in terms of performance when you're comparing it to the iMac or MacBook Pro. So this really comes down to if you want to customize your device or if you want Apple to sort of do it for you with the iMac and the MacBook Pros and the MacBook Airs. I have been using this for a couple days now 
and it actually is performing pretty well, better than I thought, because I have heard issues when it comes to using non-native apps like, you know, Premiere Pro. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and I'll see you in the next one.